Hey, people, y'all doing all right? This is So Walter Jones Unplugged. And I want to talk about something very interesting. It's kind of unusual to, to, um, to see this in society, but it happens in a whole lot of families. And what is that? Well, they are married, but they're living single. Living single, are they separated? Are they divorcing? No, they're happy. And I've seen this in the couples. Uh, and I thought it was unusual until I realized that they were happy and it was working for them. I didn't understand it then because I want to wake up and go to sleep to my wife. Um, but uh, in some cases, especially as they get older, uh, they may not want that. And there's some people in marriages, they don't like each other, but they love each other. And so the love keeps them together. And so because they don't like each other, they find ways to get around that like or dislike. Ooh. So Walter Jones Unplugged. <laughs> Hey, everybody, this is me, Sir Walter. This is Unplugged. And yeah, um, I used to be uh, a part of a church where I would see a woman at, the, at the, the church. She was a missionary, and she went to church every um, Sunday. And I would ask her where her husband She says, her husband's at church. I said, I don't never see him here at church. She says, no, he's at his church. Hmm? He go to church? Yeah. He asked, and I'm like, he don't go to this church? No. And you don't go to his church? No. He goes to his church. I go to my church. And when we're done, we go home. We come home and we have dinner and uh, do whatever. We lounge and we go to bed. Y'all all right? Yeah, we're happy. <laughs> they worship at two different places. And here's the thing. Not only do they worship at two different places, but they worship under two different um, works or denominations. She was Koji. He was Baptist. And it worked. At my church, uh, there was a uh, gentleman there. I, I'm not going to say his name, but everybody knows him. He's a very lovable man. We love him so much, so dearly. He's, he's, he's up in age, so he needs help to get around here and there. But he loved his wife until she died. She was a uh, Presbyterian or Lutheran or something. We loved her. And she came to our church, and she would she loved to hear me play piano, and she loved to hear the choir sing, what have you, and then she was gone. She just, that was not her forte. She didn't like a lot of loud noise or what have you, as the Pentecostal churches do. She just liked a uh, lecturer and, and, and just piano, acoustic piano. Don't plug nothing in, you know. But her and her husband loved each other and uh, raised an amazing daughter. I played for at the wedding. Um, how was that working? Works great. It may not work for you. There are, uh, you, no one really decided they're going to get married and then they say, but we're going to live in two separate places. Yeah, there, there's some people who do that. True. But the average person are trying to live the American dream. They get married, they have uh, two and a half children. Never understood the half part. And uh, a house, a two-car garage, and a white picket fence. And um, a good, secure job. And they would work on that job for 30 years plus and retire and live off of their pension. That was the American dream, and many are living that. So many more are not. So I was watching this um, video by Bishop Greg Davis, and he and his wife go do these little these little TikTok and YouTube, uh, Facebook things, you know, try to be funny, what have you. You know, Bishop Davis is unusual to be a bishop to do these things, but you know, some of it is pretty funny. Um, and he interviewed this young lady who married, and listen to the content of this, please. So you're married yes. and you got the right one. Okay. <laughs> okay, so how long you been married? 38 years. Oh, he got to be the right one if you stay that long. No, we live in separate homes. That is the right way to live for 38 years. Wait a minute, wait. How long y'all live in separate homes? 10. And and it gets y'all that works for y'all? Fabulous. Where y'all y'all live in different states? No, we live here in Detroit. In different homes. Yes. 
So how does it work? I, I'm fascinated. Come you go to your home and I go to mine. We don't have to argue. We don't have to yap. This is a good deal. And you trust him? Of course. He trusts you? Of course. How often y'all see each other? All the time. But y'all don't sleep in the same place unless you want, you know. Yeah. You want to do that? Yeah. But it's a great deal. When My son is behind that camera. He gonna tea taking all this when, in. When you married that long, it's wonderful. You don't have to get a divorce. Just get in separate houses. Y'all heard it. When the right one comes, don't have to live under the same roof. That's right. Thank you. When you've been married that long, you don't have to get a divorce. Just get a separate house. If you can afford it, there's some expenses that are incurred there that, that we see that, that, you know, whether it's a house, whether it's an apartment or I don't know. If you can afford it and you want to save your marriage, do it. That's hard to hear. <clears throat> some of you, it's hard for you to hear that. And I get it. Some people, especially in this day and time, I keep bringing up the fact that Paul was saying that because of the present time, it's best that you don't get married because you can't handle it. You find yourself getting into stuff that you, you can't do. You can't get involved in because you're married. Now you've got to live for both people. You can't just live for yourself. This is one reason why he mentioned that the, the, the single folks tend to the, to the things of the Lord. But the married folks tend to one another and the things of the world. It says, because when you get married, you've got to deal with all of the things that includes marriage. Her problems are yours. His problems are yours. Her bills are yours and vice versa. When she's sick, you're sick. And can you, do you have the mental capacity uh, to handle all of that? So, when I talk to people who are wanting to get married, I try to talk them out of marriage more so than I try to talk them into because maybe you ain't thinking about it. And if you are, all right, problems are going to come, some problems that you can't handle. And what is your plan B? You don't have one? Get one. You might want to rethink this. You need a contingency plan. You need a way out, not of the marriage, but you need a way out of this problem. And uh, as I often quote the, qu the quote, uh, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. So it may seem unorthodox for two people to come together, live a few years and decide they, not, they don't want to live physically together, but they want to stay married. When, um, when I was having problems, that's what I wanted to do. We separated and then there was times when that, that, when the feeling of when you wanted sex, you wanted to do it the godly way and not wanting to go on the black book. Well, you shouldn't have one anymore. <laughs> for those of us, for those of you who are young, we had black books. We didn't have phones or what have you. We had roller decks or what have you. If you had a black book and you were a bachelor, you had mostly women's phone numbers. <laughs> I gave that life up. I got married. But when we separated, I wanted sex. And guess what? So did she. So who do we call? She didn't call nobody. I didn't call nobody. I called her. You still belong to me until we can figure this out. Are we going to get divorced or are we going to or, or not? If not, my body's still awake and your body still work. All our parts still work. Why not? So I, I, I would come over to the house and business would get taken care of. And I, I didn't have to leave some strangers or some friend's house and go home and be crying in my sheets. God, I'm sorry. Well, some marriages do that with no purpose of getting divorced or separation. Although this is a, this is a, this is a separation, but this is a physical separation. This is not a separation uh, as a whole. You know, there's two different types of separation. And I would go as far as to say there's two different types of divorces. Uh, because many people who finally get a divorce after the judge has, uh, decides that you are divorced, many couples are divorced up here. They left that marriage a long time ago. 
And all they're waiting is for the paperwork to come in. But they have already made their mind. We're done. Separation is the same way. So I applaud this couple. Notice what she said when she was asked the question, do you, tr- do he, do you trust him? She's like, yeah. And he trusts me too. And they're fine. How often do y'all meet? All the time. After 38 years, she said, it's okay. People who are up, who are famous, who are influencers, who are popular, many of them decide to get married and don't tell y'all. So there's a difference between being private and being secret. What time is it? When a woman hears a man say secret, she thinks that he's hiding something. And in many cases, he may be. The average person thinks that a secret is a you're hiding something. But private, well, that's different. That's something between you and yourself and your God or that person. So there is a difference between privacy and secrecy. But I think it depends on who you're speaking to and how they defined it because there are people who get married and you don't even know that they're married today. They did it secretly, but it is a private matter. Do you understand? And so instead of them uh, insisting that it is secret, they insist that most of that this is a private matter. This, this is none of your business. I at least married the person. And you may only know that they're married because uh, they don't even wear wedding rings. But you may know they're married because you went digging into what might be public uh, knowledge and go down to the courts and you can tell who's married and who's not. Or you see them on some island or something like that kissing or blah, blah, blah. And you, and you, you may think that's a girlfriend or boyfriend, but, you know, you can check that. If you know who those people are, you can go, you can find out if they're married or not. And he'd be like, oh, wow, they're married. Why they didn't tell nobody? Because it's a private matter. To you, it was secret. And let me tell you, I can't tell you how many times I have considered that down through the years. I don't want you in my business. Some people find it peace and solace and tranquility to do things godly and you don't have to know that they're doing it because they don't want you in their business because the saints are the most busiest and nosiest people I know today. My brother Larry from Stock Up, if you type in Larry Jones and typically Google will finish the rest of the words because it depends on how many people are looking. He and I have had this conversation a couple of times. When you type in Larry Jones, what pops up automatically is his wife. (laughs) And so I did that with me. And his wife was one of the searches in the Google search. Now, most people who watch my shows know I'm single. So there will be no need to search for his wife. But there are people who stumble upon me. I get new subscribers every week. I get hundreds of new subscribers every month. And um, people want to know. This guy who dresses nice, you know, I used to dress like this every week. Uh, uh, well, on the weekend, only on the weekends, maybe like a, on a Sunday night. I used to do our shows on Sunday night. And I full tie, clergy collar, you know, all of that. I don't do that anymore. I don't even do shows anymore on Sundays. But, but now I do this every night on Unplugged, no tie, just a jacket, the dinner jacket, what have you. And people are new to the show and they type in Sir Walter Jones, who is his wife. <laughs> All right. People are nosy. They want to know. <laughs> Some people are not necessarily nosy. They're just inquisitive. They just want to know, okay, nice guy. Is he married? Those are those, those people who are nice and they just want to know his whole, who is he? You know, because he seemed like a nice guy. Others, they just nosy. So this may not be for you, 
who are married or considering marriage may not be for you because I can't tell you how many times I've had to move a husband out of the, the bedroom or out of the house thinking that they are getting ready to be divorced, but no, they're not divorcing. They just can't live in the same house with each other, but they can go shopping. They can go to the movies. They can have sex, but they can't live in the same house because they're fighting. And it's like, why do y'all still, why be married? Blah, blah, blah. Because there's some connection that they do have. And unfortunately they can't dwell peacefully with each other. Why? Because some brothers and sisters can't do that. They just can't. There are some, Fathers and sons and daughters and mothers can't dwell together in the same house. They just can't. But they love each other. And it's just it's just best that you leave the house and I'll support you in, in another house. I still love you. You're still my son. You're still my daughter. But we can't live in the same house together because there's some things that just I do and you do that just ugh, we don't like it. So so I, I don't see in the scriptures where two people have to live in the same house to be married. No. I see where obviously uh, these men did live in the same house with them. But if you look at the old way with concubines and several wives, there's no way that all these wives and concubines live in the same house as Solomon. <laughs> well, the, uh, the castle, yeah, the palace, yeah, a lot of them did live there. Uh, but typically there was one, you know, like Queen Esther and that whole story. So, and and she, you know, had to ask. Well, she really couldn't. If the if the if the king didn't summons her, she would have lost her head if she asked to see him. <laughs> I mean, that's how crazy it was in, in that in that time. Uh, but uh, we don't see in the scriptures. We we see that marriage is honorable, and um, God has blessed that institution. Now, what y'all do with it after that is really up to you and God. And if there if peace will come because you all living in two separate homes. And that's what God wants. He wants you to stay together. And if that means living in two separate homes, by all means. He does hate divorce. He do. He knows that it has to happen sometimes. But if you cannot do it and live separately and still enjoy your time together while you're away and trustworthy and you both ain't cheating on each other, that's a good setup right there. I can't knock none of that. Uh, I'm not saying that's what I want. No, I'm saying I can't knock it because I've seen it work successfully. These people who go to two different churches and these people who live in two separate homes, they kiss each other goodnight and drive off. And it's like a forever girlfriend. It's a forever courting one another. And it works out. Don't knock what people do if it's working for them. Your relationship is jacked up. And I keep telling y'all, sometimes it's okay to take a break. Uh, if you was at movie night on Sunday night, we played The Little House on the Perry, And uh, the, the brother left the house, left town for a few days. But unfortunately, he got himself caught up in a, in a girl. All right? He was kissing her and lying to her, but he wasn't married. That can cause a problem. So when, when the bishop asks, do you trust him? Yeah, I trust him. And she's trustworthy as well. So you don't want to separate from each other and, and, and think that this is a great thing to do if you can't <laughs> trust yourself that you're not going to go out and you know, do other things because you're lonely. That can be the dangerous part of living in two separate places. So you might want to think about it. Y'all come together, you pray about it. And um, if you come to a conclusion that you both can be trustworthy, trust each other and trust yourself, I say if it's going to keep your marriage together, separate. And, um, you know, and may maybe because people, what they do, is they stay together for the children. You really don't want to find yourself doing that. I get it. You want to save the children, especially when they're young. OK, I get it. Find your way around that. Find your way through that. That is not around it, but through that as much as you can. Those kids will get older. And what you don't want to do is waste your life. Hold up your life trying to please the kids and please somebody else. You holding up your life. I'm sorry. That's going to be a part two, too. There's a whole lot of part twos going to come out of these, these shows, huh? I ain't holding up my life. 
especially at this time while I'm on the second half of my life, I can't hold it up. I, don't, I ain't got but a few more years on this earth. I ain't holding it up. No. We're going to have to work this out the best way possible. Listen, let me go. Let's talk tomorrow. All right? If you want to. <laughs> if not, come sit on the couch and let's talk if you disagree. All right? Y'all know I love it that y'all and ain't nothing you can do about it. I'll see you tomorrow. So Walter Jones, unplugged.